Mmm, I just love me a good cup of coffee. Okay, welcome, welcome back to the bench. What I'm doing here is finally, and I do mean finally, working on the Lake City Station slash Dine Or with an O. It's not correct. That's how it's spelled. Deal with it. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to assemble this bad boy. The station version, again from the 1950s. And the reason that I'm doing the station is because that's mostly what I'm going to be operating. So I figured, eh, it probably makes the most sense to have the station. This is the block that Bill cut for me. Another block building, modified obviously with an interior. Somewhat, not full interior. Just enough. And that was be more interesting on the, on the diner version as opposed to this. So I haven't done a whole lot yet. Pretty much got the, the block and all the pieces out. I have all the custom Shapeways windows. I had to do a lot of fiddling with the openings, get them to fit, but they're pretty much all ready to go. I had to add this little cutout here. That's going to be for the operator, and that's Louie the operator there. have some interior parts ready to go in. I'm not going to mess well, I should say I'm not going to agonize over the interior on this a whole lot. Where it's going to be on the layout, it's going to be very hard to see. I'm not building this for any type of contest model. I just want to get it done on the layout. So I'm not overly worried about the interior, but I'm going to put something in there. Because you will be able to see in the windows eventually through the front side here. So I'm going to position Louie so you can see him drinking coffee. Um, you can see his... <laughs> His operator stand is just an old workbench I cut down to fit because you're not going to see it from the outside. I'll probably put a lamp over here, maybe some papers, a telephone. You've got a few things you will be able to notice through the window. And then just some desks and a couple REA packages and other paraphernalia. It's going to be back. And then I do have it set for lights. This would have been easier, note to self, the way Bill did it for me, which is good. You put this base on it. You see I drilled a hole and then use my normal tube to bring the, the, the lead lights up. It would have been easier if this was off and I could have wired the lights and secured them to the ceiling before. But I didn't feel like cutting it out, so I'm going to deal with it. It's probably hard to see, but that, yeah, it's dark. But there is the, it's a piece of uh, tube just, you know, glued against the wall to route the leads through. I'm going to use three lights. Probably two. You can't see what the world I'm doing. Two here, and then one kind of hanging out over the operator area to see that. I had these old, old. I had these in the my collection. These are Viesman. They're actually bright white, which doesn't look right for the era. So I dabbed done some Tamiya. What did I use? Actually worked pretty good. Hold on a second. Let me. Well, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a non tripod pan and zoom. Dun, da, da. That to me a clear orange worked out pretty well to change it to yellow. Looks good. Good enough for me. So I'm going to put those three in on the inside and then get these interior pieces in and then start slapping the walls on. You know, I'm not going to agonize over this building. I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Of course, I want it to look right and era appropriate. But a lot of the pre-work's been done, so I'm just going to try to get this put together relatively quickly. Paint it in what I think will be the appropriate, at the time, um, leftover Lakeshore, Michigan Southern colors. Same as I did for the freight house uh, that I did for over in Sharon. So, alright, so, just to capture this for posterity, I'm going to get moving on here. I'm just waiting for that little bad boy to dry. And then I'm going to get the interior put in. Well, first of all, I'll get the lights put in so I get those out of the way. Glue all these pieces down. And then be ready for walls and have at it. So, all right, more to come as we uh, plug away here. Three hour, or three years in the works. <laughs> and I never said I did things fast. Um, Lake City Train Station. All right, more to come. All righty. Got the lights in. Wasn't the funnest thing in the world. A little bit of harsh language was used. Again, it would have been a lot easier if I didn't try to feed them through with everything all together like that. But so if I get them routed into the channel to come down. So you got the three. I got the one 
sticking out there for the operator and then the two inside and they're not super bright but it should be fine and then for now I'm gonna go ahead and have them taped across the bottom to keep those darn leads out of the way and uh, keep moving ahead so let's uh, get the office interior in and get ready to do the walls alrighty Louis got his desk <laughs> Probably not the way a real operator's desk would be, but for this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's fine. And uh, he's got his desk, his lamp, he's got some papers there, he's got his nice blue coffee cup. Little telephone action. Okay, I threw some other stuff there on the inside of that, just to, again, give it some interest if you look through the window. And it's going to be really hard to see, but that's it. You know, the lights on the top there, the two in the main area, and the one over the operator area. So, I guess that's the way it's kind of looking now, but when you get the actual wall on, obviously, oh, sorry, <laughs> that will decrease the amount you're going to see. So really all you're going to be able to see is through, you know, the, the two front windows here or that window there that's a door and that's solid so it's going to be a challenge to see in there i mean you'll, you'll be able to see some stuff i guess i think these windows are falling out but again that's going to be oop, the, the front so i kind of did so you'll see you know you'll see the lamp and you'll see him and his coffee cup and you probably can't even tell what the heck that telephone is but all right so now Decisions, decisions. Do I want to... <sighs> the real big decision that i got to worry about, not worry about, but consider on the prototype, outside of the four windows here, the two in the front and the two in the side. They seem to be two pane, you know, single, top and bottom. These darn windows, all of these, they're 12 panes. Uh, I, mean, I don't... Yeah, and again, these are custom made just with the you know the kind of a two pane do I want to go in and try to make these 12 pane windows six top six bottom how do I do that can I get acetate that's got the uh, printed sashes or whatever those things are on it I don't, I don't know that's the one thing about these windows when I talk to the guy who made them so I just can't you know with at, at the state of time at the time the state of technology with it with the 3d printing he just couldn't get those other sashes in there. So I'm like, oh. Is that called a sash? What in the world is that called? I have no idea. I know they're, you know, they're panes, but I don't know what you call the little pain dividers. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? So what do I do about that? I don't know. And then I'm thinking I may then, if I ever figure that out, I may want to actually paint the walls first. I know people are going to scream that it's going to warp. I don't know. And then, you know, paint these because they're going to be a different color. Just be a little bit easier, a little bit neater when I go to assemble it. Then I can just glue the uh, varos to the Z-block. And then I actually might have to put the windows in first because I do want to, you know, put them in. Then put the acetate behind it. Get that all set. I'm going to put individual pain dividers in there. I don't know. What the hell are they called? I'll have to look it up. Alright. So anyway, having fun. Fortune ahead here. Not letting you see anything. So I think we'll get there. It'll be it'll look nice when it's done. And again, I'm not going to... Once I figure out the wind is, it should go pretty quick because I'm not going to agonize, like I said, a whole lot over it. Just given where it's going to be and the intention for, the, for this particular model. So, alright. Got some head scratching, some noodling around to do, then we'll, we'll be back with more, more updates. All right, back at the bench here, and I finally figured out how I'm going to tackle these windows because they are eight pane double hung, eight eight double hung windows. Uh, I might have said 12 in the previous segment, I'm not sure, but they definitely are eight. And the muntins are what I'm trying to figure out how to do or the sash grid I've seen a couple different terms for it anyway <laughs> the little bars that go in between the panes 
So, what I came up with, I thought initially, well, maybe I can print on, you know, clear acetate, just print black or, or gray or something like that, and then just glue that piece of acetate in the back of the window. Okay, that might have worked. But to me, I knew I never would be able to match the paint that I'm using for the window frame. So I did some snooping around, and it turns out, bear with me here, because no, I don't have a tripod, so if that bothers you, please leave the channel immediately. But the Titchy 8086 double hung masonry, I'm looking at it, and it's, okay, it's an 8.8, and it's got the nice little grid there. I said, well, I wonder if possibly if I could do some surgery on that. And it turns out I can. Uh, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it does seem to work out, you know, good enough for this. So, basically what I did was I took, you need two windows to make one, because when you cut it, you lose the bottom part of the, of the pane. But basically you take the window, you cut it in half, and then you get what I'll show here, if it focuses. Okay, so here's the... The window itself and I'm going to take you know, two of those to make one so then what I do is I very carefully with a very sharp <laughs> exacto blade you come in and you, you cut it so you get the upper grid that's these pieces so they're the raw pieces for the upper and then you come in again very carefully along the edges and there's, you can kind of line things up and you cut away the frame and then you have to tilt it up because there's a little bit of frame and you cut vertically off the bottom and basically you get these flat little grids which fit uh, pardon me here I'm gonna try to see if this is a, maybe a little bit visible maybe that's a little bit better so the grids then and you gotta be careful because sometimes you get real close but they've held up so far okay and then what I've been doing is using a little fixture nothing high-tech you can see it's the window pretty much turned over and then the grids are very very carefully dropped in and they fit in there pretty good they're not perfect top to bottom but they're pretty darn close and then I look get them in there and I come in with a little tiny dot of super glue dot 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 to get them held in and so far it's been working okay here's the first two I did this one here is done with the titchy glazing in the back and the the grid painted to match the window. This is when I just kind of got the, the grids in there so you might be able to see it's, it's still the, the gray plastic from Titchy. So I'll, I'll paint that the, uh, the same color, flip it over, and then either use the Titchy glazing or cut out some clear acetate. I could cut a whole single piece to fit because it will work. The titchy piece, titchy glazing on here was a little bit dirty and foggy, which I'm okay with. Because the window, you know, these are mm, getting into the, into the late 50s era. You know, how how dedicated were they to cleaning windows on these stations? I don't know. But anyway, so I think it's going to work. Again, not perfect. But I think it's going to look okay. To me, it looks a lot better. I think it looks better than trying to do with the glazing. I think that might have worked. But eh, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to match the color the way I can ex match it exactly here because I can paint everything the same. So I have to make 12 of these. So I need 24 of the windows. Now I only had one pack of these. But luckily, as a side note, we had a board of directors meeting for our NMRA division. And I was riding along with a gentleman. He said, do you want to stop at a hobby shop? I'm like, yeah, why not? And they actually had another pack yay so now with these 12 I can actually make enough windows to do this version if and again if because when you're cutting these you gotta be real careful I'll be surprised if I make it through and don't you know damage one of these so I did order some more uh, I think I ordered three more packs to come in but you know I wanted to keep working so I'm glad I found this pack at the hobby shop so if I get lucky I'll be able to get all these done but worst case if I do damage some, I do have another set coming in. Actually, three other bags, because I do need, if I make the modern version of this, which is the diner, it's the same thing. So, there's the window. And this is the one that's pretty much complete. 
I know it's going to be hard to see. With the grid, everything glued in, if I vary, bear with me here. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a drone maneuver here. Now, this probably might not show up all that well, but there's the actual, whoa. Let me try this. So there's the actual prototype photo. Now, that's as a diner. So they're obviously they're modern. And it even looks like, you know, I don't know. I'm assuming originally they were the 8.8 like that. Um, that's the way I'm making it. But these look like these windows have been updated, which they probably have over time. But that's my rendition of it compared to the prototype. You know, I'm happy with that. And again, this is going to sit far enough away from the aisle that I think these windows will be perfectly acceptable once I get them up and mounted, get everything done and, you know, maybe painted and weather a little bit. This is the wall that will face the layout closest. So these six windows will be the ones that are closest to the layout. That's the operator side of it. That's the side back here with the now blown out because my f-stop. <laughs> So that side will be closer to the layout. The other side will be very far away, really hard to see. So I'll take my time and get these done. It's, it is tedious, but I'm not going to agonize over it terribly. So now it's just a matter of getting everything cut, kind of getting the assembly line going. I think it'll be easier that way now that I, now that I fiddle with it and have the, the proof of concept done. <laughs> you know, I'll kind of just line up the next next set of windows and get everything cut and ready and then just do, 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 do the glue and then let that set turn them over paint everything get the glazing in and hopefully it won't be too terrible a process so all right so that's it that's how we're going to make the windows that's how i'm getting my muntin grid or sash grid in there and i think it'll look acceptable so there we go let us uh get into the fun now that we'll be making these windows and we'll come back when we're done Alrighty, we got our windows done. All 12 of the ones that are made are done. These four for the bay window. I'm going to leave them like that, the way they came, because it's according to the current building. That's the way they are. I, again, I don't have a good picture as a station back in the 50s, but I'm just going to assume that they're that way, so I'll leave them like that. Plus, it'll help you all to see the interior there a, little, a little bit better. So. All right, they're done. I actually like the way these turned out. I'm glad I decided to go that way. I think they're going to look fine. Again, they're not perfect in that they're off a little bit. But what I'll do, <laughs> I'll go in, I'll find the six best and use them for the track side, which is the more aisle side. That's actually going to be, I come back a wee bit. This side here is going to be more visible from the aisle of the layout. The other side will be really hard to see, especially when I get the, some dividing trees in there between Wallace Junction and up in Lake City. be much more hard to see. So any of these windows that look a little eh, wonky or off a little bit, I'll put them on the back side. So, all right, there we go. So now I do have the paint on. The sides, I decided to go this and try it this way this time. So they're painted up. Don't panic, they didn't warp. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably install the windows out here. I need to get them in and put a little bit of weight on them. Because, again, they are from Shapeways, most of them. And there's a little tiny bit of a bow to them. So I want to be able to put them in and add some weight to it. So that's why I decided to go this way. Because it would be a little bit easier than having the walls physically on the block itself. So, oh, you can see I also had a little accident with the tip of an X-Acto blade. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they are freaking sharp. Okay, so back to this. I'm going to work on getting the windows into the walls. Um, I am going to, you know, build a little operator area first and then probably get this wall on. And try to glue that on, put a little ceiling section in there as well, and then uh, go from there. So, all right, more to come as we progress. All right, just to make my life a little bit more difficult, 
<laughs> what I decided to do was add three lights um, on the this track side here of the building. This again, this is the side by the tracks where the operator shed and you know people come out to the platform. And on the prototype, because the overhang of the roof eaves is so large, they don't have you know like gooseneck lamps coming all above the doors. They're hanging from one of the eaves. Like, okay, it isn't too hard to, to accomplish, but since it's a solid block building, it does add a little layer of complexity. So what I decided to do, I'm not sure how well it'll show up. I, I put in a little channel running from the base up to the roof line. And you can see the little hanging light in there. That's going to run down that channel. And in this case, you know, it's going to be behind this door. This one's going to be kind of like right over where there's going to be a train ID board. And this one I cheated a little. I brought it down the inside there in the slot. And the door's actually over here a little bit, but I'll move it over. That's for this other door down here. Now, really, to be all honest, in doing this, you know, I, I the intent of a solid block building is not to do all this kind of stuff. It's more to be a quicker, you know, get a building in place, make it look good, but don't worry about all the details, especially not interiors and all kinds of fancy lighting. Well, here I am doing it. So I really should just have built this as a regular building. But just to have some fun, <laughs> let's see if I can do it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put those in the grooves. I got a little couple pieces of paper just to cover over the channels. Because when I glue the wall on it, I don't want glue to get in the channel, ideally. That way I can still move them up and down. The wire's a little, so it doesn't take much. There's plenty of room in there. That way I can move them up and down and then try to get them finagled to hang down under the eaves when the roof is on. So that'll be the next little science project. But So that's what we're going to try. We're going to see if it works out. You know, worst case, if it doesn't, I just cut the lights off. They weren't all that expensive. So uh, <laughs> just a little bit of work here to see if I can get these uh, exterior under-eave lights placed and uh <laughs> all right let's get going here let's see if this works so real quick here's the my, my the method of my madness here so you can see i got the wall just placed on there the door in place and the light sticking up i did notch the very top of the roof line there just so that i can kind of bend that out of the way because you know the roof will be coming down over that so i didn't want to pinch the wires too terribly bad so, that's how we're going to do it. And then if everything works, and those little paper channels help me, I'll be able to move the lights, you know, in the channels, because right now I certainly can. You know, to adjust them, because I'm probably going to need to play with them a little bit when I get the roof on and get everything going. So you can see that's what I did there. Just put a piece of paper there to give me a little bit of channel uh, to help keep it in there. But also, more importantly, in my, is to keep any glue out of there. I'm going to try to be real careful, but I don't think it'd be a big deal if I got um, a little bit of glue on top of this. But I, I, you know, I don't want the glue to ooze in there, and then wherever that thing is, that's where it's staying. So, all right, so that's that. We'll let this sit up just for a little bit, then get the windows in and get the sides on. That's the next big thing is uh, put all the windows in. I'm going to have to weight them a little bit. Weight them down, I mean. Because, again, the, you know, the Shapeways windows, I like them, but they're a little bit bowed. So hopefully if I get some glue on there, a little bit of weight, they'll snuggle in nice. They fit nice in the openings, but, all right, enough babbling. Let's get the windows all glued on and start getting the sides glued to the building. Ah, it's an earthquake. The building's up on its end. Oh, no. Run for the hills. All right, so just a little, uh, sorry about that in progress I got the front or the farther away side <laughs> walls are on I have the one end that's gonna be the railway Express you know freight end gluing up right now just slap some weight on there to hold it for a little bit and then you can see I have the other walls all done ready to rock and or roll Probably do this one next at the end then do the long wall I did make the little operators shed here shed <laughs> this little bay vinda is made 
I painted the inside of it just for fun. Add some bracing. So that's going to sit. I can't really do this with one hand and hold the camera. Because I don't have a tripod. Ah, panic. Run for the hills. All right. So that'll go there eventually. So I'm going to let this set up here for a little bit. Then flip it over. Brace it on some of the quarter inch. Are they quarter inch? Yeah, whatever, quarter inch, three eighths square, whatever they are. I guess I can get this side on, let that dry up nice, and then get the long wall on. Because on that one, I got to worry about the wires. Because like I said, I have the wires here, you know, again for those little Eve lights. I got those three things to deal with and everything. So, all right, back to uh, back to work and some more updates as we make a little more progress. Alrighty, here we go. Got the f four walls, <laughs> all the walls on. Yeah, I guess it's four, close enough. Plus a little bay. Um, ready to go. Everything's glued on. And now I'm getting ready to put the roof on. You can see these are here, and they're, they're still movable. So these will be positioned. They're the little hanging lights. They move in the slots in there. I'll get those positioned, I think, once I get the the roof on I decided to go ahead and make a little <laughs> I don't know how well this little bad boy will show up but this is a little telephone box I guess something like that now it's probably not gonna focus probably gonna lose it in here but that is a little telephone box based on a prototype photo that I saw I saw it was kinda neat you know, this kind of stuff on these, you know, older pictures. Sorry about that. I'm trying to steady things up here. Are uh, interesting. And like I said, the prototype photo that I used for that, that's completely scratch built. Not, not that it's, wow. It's just a telephone box. But this is a prototype photo for it. I have no idea the dimensions. I just enlarged this from a picture of a station. And I said, that looks kind of cool. You recognize the colors? It actually is a station along the old uh, Lakeshore, Michigan, Southern. I think this is over in Olmstead Falls. So these are the colors that I'm sort of painting my station as well. All right, so that's that. And I figured, well, how big is that thing? I don't know. Looks like it's kind of a little rectangle with two doors and a little roof on it. So I said, okay. So I just kind of took some of this, and yeah, a little close, I don't know, cut it to the right size, you know, to the to the size of it, cut in the, the roof slope by hand, so it's certainly not perfect, cut the uh, doors out of little pieces of paper, well, out of paper, for hinges I use this real itty bitty wire here, cut real small pieces, <laughs> And real carefully glued them along the outside for for the hinges and then uh, cut another piece of paper for the roof and kind of you know folded it over it's just folded there again this is not real high tech at all and then i did on the back of it if that shows up i put on scale one by fours to mount it because it looked like there's something to mount the thing and that might be too bright but they're on there so I'm going to go ahead and mount that bad boy. You know, it's close enough. Again, again, you're not going to see it from right in front of it. I'm not building this, like I said, for a for a contest model or anything like that. And I'm going to just take that and mount it over here on the wall. So that's going to be mounted over there. Little telephone box. Eh, cool. I guess I added the train information, the train bullet in there. That's from, uh, I don't know, from... That's just, I just cut out and put that on there. Now, some issues with this. Yes, again, it's not perfect by any stretch, stretch of the imagination. I should have done, done, done a better job aligning the slope of the operator's area with the rest of the roof. It, it's off. And I don't know if you can see that pencil line that I added in there. I was holding with a ruler. It may not show up. I'd have to really, I have been doing some sanding to make it better, 
but I almost have to come down to the top of these windows. So I really kind of messed up on that. And that what I should have done is, you know, held these pieces in place, verified that they're going to sit okay with the slope of the roof. I don't know if you can see the gap in there. It's not terrible. And I think once I get it on and it's going to stick up a little bit, it's, you know, it's going to bow a slight amount coming up here. I may sand it a little bit more, but okay. Then you get it shingled and everything, I think it'll be fine. So I do have the roof pieces cut. Um, I added a little bit. When Bill made this for me, he had these little strip wood pieces here at the end. And I kind of added a piece of running down the whole length. And these cutouts that you see here, here, and here are for when the chimney, where the chimneys are going to be. So I'll put one part of the roof on, mark that, and I'm going to use these rectangular chimneys here. They're not perfect, but they're close, and I'm not going to agonize over it. So that's just so that when I cut through the roof, I don't have to worry about digging into that. So that's just a little bit of a pre-cut there for when I put the the chimneys in and notch the roof for the chimneys. So, all right. As I said, the roof pieces are cut here in the back. I'm using this leftover stuff from one of the N-Scale Architect kits. I like it. Good material. It may make a good base. And then we'll get some some fascia or some, you know, some eave boards on it and whatnot. And, and I'm really, you know, the, the whole intent of a block building like this is to make it relatively quick. Not to agonize over all kinds of details and stuff. I mean, we want it to look good. But again, it's meant for more of a, you know, a background type building. And I'm, to be honest, putting way too much effort into this. This is not the intent of a block building like this. Not that you just slap it together, but I'm doing, you know, a little bit more with the with the interior, adding these lights, um, you know, adding some other details to it, which are fine. You still can do that kind of stuff. But but again, I'm not going to agonize much more over it. Get the roofs on. I do have to put some eave brackets on. I think I know what I'm going to do for that. Cut out for the chimneys, get it shingled weather it up a little bit, and then I'm going to be done. I mean, the, the whole intent of this was to do it relatively quickly. So, that is the... Oh, my roofs keep falling here. So, overall, and this might be a little bit dark here. I don't have the... I'll just drop the F-stop down. So, there's that end. And then the front, or the, you know, the non-track side as well and then the end where on this particular version I'm making it for railway express and freight i don't think they did that on the prototype but just because of the way that this is supposed to be a dual era change out building this being the 1950s era ish train station and the next one i build being the all aboard dinor with an o that's right, folks. Don't try to correct my spelling. It's D-I-N-O-R. And that building has, at the far end, the extension for the kitchen they added. So anyway, so on the 50s version, I'm going to have a platform here to take up the space where the kitchen is on the more modern building. All right, so that's that. So let's go ahead, get the roof on, and see if I can push this thing through to completion. Although, like I said, it's taken me a lot longer than I expected, but uh, let's try to get it done and get it on the layout. Oh boy, so here we are on the uh, the gritty underbelly of the building. And what I just got done here is the wiring for all the interior lights and for the three um, hanging shades on the front of the building. So what I decided to do, I know it looks a little wonky right now, but there's a method of the madness. The LED, interior LED leads are these two sets, and then they're tinned together, and I'll probably put a connector on when I get them down through. And they're actually going to run up here, straight out. So I'm just laying them here now. So when I flip the building over, they're going to sit in a notch on this, this base so I can work on the building. Now this long wire here and the green wire are actually the leads for the three LEDs hanging underneath the front eave. And what I decided to do for those, because that wire is so small and such a pain, 
I came in through a current limiter, which I'm sticking here onto the base. So the positive comes into the positive side of that. And I did have a check it and I did burn one out, but luckily I didn't have it connected to my the actual ideas I'm using. So get polarity right on those current limiters. And then it runs up and the three are in series. And the return lead comes out over here, because that's where the other LED is, or the other lamp is on the underside. And I'm going to run it up with this. So I know it looks weird, but the way it's going to actually work when the actual building goes on, let's see if I can get this to sit here. Hold on a second. Let me get this reconfigured on that. I'll show you real quick. Whew, it's hard to do with one hand. Okay, so... <laughs> That's the actual base that's already sitting on the layout, um, the foundation, so to speak. So what's going to happen is, over here is the positive for the hanging lamps. That's the green wire. That's going to come straight out through a hole here in between this area. Over here, this big blunch, which is the all the leads for the interiors and the return or ground for the hanging LEDs, is also going to come straight out this way. So I'll have to have a hole here, these, these will come straight out, a hole there, the positive for the well, hanging lights will come out. And the only thing kind of running on the, on the underside, and it won't be a big deal because the wires are so small, and you probably can't even see them, there's itty bitty darn leads for the LEDs, which daisy chain, you know, I come in here, this one, series with this one, series with this one, and then connect to the larger wire to bring it out. So that's how that works. So let's turn it over and see if everything still actually lights up. All right, it's gonna be hard to see, but those are the interior lights for the operator's bay and the a little bit of the freight room, his office back in there. I don't know if you can see when they're drinking coffee. Yeah, this may not focus too well, but uh, that's my man in there. You can see his lamp and I don't think you can even see his little telephone sitting there. All right, anyway, all right, so that's the interior lights, so they all work. Now, let's hook up the LEDs under the eaves and hope that they still work. So, I'll be right back. Woohoo! Okay. You can see the light from the three LEDs that are hanging under there. And I may have to adjust them a wee bit, but at least I got them in there and they're freaking on. <laughs> and nothing broke yet. So, they look alright. You know, over the door and over the train bulletin. Obviously, these won't be coming out here to be big, ugly, garish, and in the way there. But uh, another thing I noticed, again, maybe turn the light back on. Probably, I don't think it'll show up real well, but <laughs> this window's out of cattywampus. I have it leaning too much this way. This way, it must have uh, moved a little bit because I was gluing it in from the back side. So, you can definitely see that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know if I can show it any better. You see it that way. Of course, we can't see anything. Let me see if I can. Can you see it there? It is off. Now, yeah, I'm going to put a gutter across the top here. That might help hide it a little bit. And maybe if I put a bench down here or something, a box or a person standing there, maybe I can try to disguise it a little bit. But like I said, this is definitely not a contest model. All right. Now, 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 I think it's time to get the shingles on. Now the, the lights are all behind me, so let's uh, keep forging ahead and see if I can get this puppy done. Woohoo! We got a shingled roof. Alright, so I figured I'd show this only because A, I'm lazy, but B, I figured out a way to cheat my laziness. <laughs> so the shingles I used are sheets of, let's see if this will show up here, Northeastern Scale Lumber. Two pieces pre-assembled shingles, slate gray, three inches by seven and a half. Looks like the part number is HOSHG3. So they're single sheets. And in order to do a roof this long, it took two of them. Well, that's nice, but there is a compromise there. It went real fast to put them on. However, if you can see, I'm going to point it out. You're going to have a line that's probably going to be a little visible where in between, you know, where you glue the two together. And I'm looking at that, and it wasn't too objectionable. I, don't, I didn't think. 
I'm like, well, what can I do? There's got to be something I can do to try to hide that. And I thought maybe if I cut it, you know, at, at weird angles and try to stagger the joints, and nah, I didn't try that. But turns out what you can do, and I'm going to try to get in close and zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. You might hear me breathe a little bit more, so I apologize for that. But, so, okay, so you can see that line. Let me see if I can show it. Okay, so there's the line. Right? Now, what I did, you can see the problem is what kind of makes it real visible are these little two half shingles here. All right, so what I did, starting at the top, I basically went down, and it's only every other one, I cut those out. I think you can see, if this is going to focus, yeah, so you can see I cut them out here, here, and here. So you can see the line, pretty clear. But, up above, then what I did is I put a little dab of canopy glue in there, and then when you cut these, you get a whole bunch of these to drop off. So I just kind of came in and said, okay. So then, here, glued it one in, here, glued it in. Here, glued it in. There, glued it in. Not a perfect, you see, uh, okay. There, glued it in. So that, to me, really hides that very, very well. In fact, you know, when you're back at viewing distance, you're never, I say never. I know never's a long time. Most likely, you're, you're not going to see that. So that's what I'm going to do. So, so these are already cut out. I'll come down and, and you can just skip. I'll cut those out, that out, that out. I have my little makeup pieces here. Now I did find you have to trim a tiny bit off the side. So with a nice sharp exacto blade, I just kind of go in there and just cut it out. And then what I'll do, if I can actually show this, it's hard to hold a camera and do this here. Okay, so I'm going to take that. Because ah. <laughs> I'm not really looking at it. I'm looking behind the viewfinder. Okay. So that's going to come up. And it's going to sit right there. Now I probably won't be able to pull this up. Boom. Okay, so it's not perfect, but, but you get the idea. And then, you know, you just put a little dab of canopy glue in there. And then, boop, boop, boop. Put them in, and it really hides it nice. And that's not perfect yet because I don't have it set in there right but so that's what I'm gonna do and I think now if I go back and zoom out and go back to more like a viewing distance <laughs> yeah I don't think you're gonna see it so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it to both sides not real bad I thought oh my gosh this would be so tedious but no I mean it only takes about 10 minutes for the one side. It takes me longer to video it because I'll chit chat and babble more than I will and actually get any work done. So that's it. That's what I'm going to do to hide that joint. So I like that. I'm, I'm glad I, it dawned on me. I like using these sheets. It's easy, very fast. I just spread down some canopy glue and glued the two pieces in and you know, I had them all pretty much trimmed. I did paint the lower edge here a grimy black just to give it because it was kind of showing through. Now I'm going to put a gutter along here as well. So I'll get a gutter and then I still have the two end pieces to put on. I'll do that. Now for the cap, what I'm going to do, because there is a bit of a gap, because I'm not an expert structure builder, so you can see there's a gap there. I, mean, I knew it was going to be like that because I'm planning to put a cap on. I was thinking of using just so that there's a little piece that comes with these shingles, just a solid piece. But really, look at the at the prototype. It should be a you know a shingle cap. So, going into my bag of tricks, this is from Rusty Stumps. This is their cap piece, and it's shingles. Now the color, I I know the color isn't perfect, but to me, again I'm lazy, and this is adhesive backed. So if I take that, put that on there, and you know what? It almost it's hard to see, but it kind of matches the. The color of the window frame so I'm like good enough for me oops sorry that's what the railroad did they matched the cap <laughs> with the window darker window frames the darker gray window frames 
eh, I'll take it. So now, I'll do that. I'm probably going to bring it over. I have it marked. It's hard to see. I have it marked. I'm going to cut it in for the chimneys. So, you know, bring that over. Get the chimneys in. They're going to be taken upstairs right now, and I'm going to prime them with this. They're resin casting, so I'm going to prime them with that, which might be pretty close to the actual color. Close enough for the government. And then get those cut. Get the caps in. Finish doing my little line fixing here, front and back. And then... We're getting real close to calling this puppy done. So, all right, more to come as I uh, finish up the roof here. Alrighty, I'm going to pretty much call this done. Doing the best I can to give you a little bit of a view of it here. Again, I don't have a studio by any stretch of the imagination. So, I have my LED light shining on this puppy, and we'll <laughs> see if you can see it. So, the shingles are on, chimneys are in. Chimneys are not perfect. They're uh, ones I got, I think, at, a, at one of the recent conventions. But they were close. Again, I'm not uh, too worried about being exactly to the prototype. Because I don't know what it looked like as a station. So I'm kind of winging it a little bit. So there's the little telephone shed. See, I got downspouts off the gutters there in the front. The custom Shapeways windows. Little train bullet in there. I made a Lake City sign. That was fun. It's not perfect, but <laughs> see there on the right hand side, a little bit of ink bled over. That's actually a sharpie I'm trying to highlight the outside. But that's pretty much what the Lakeshore Michigan Southern signs look like. I don't know if it's exact scale, but eh, looks okay to me. The operator shed. You can see how that one window is off. The one on the left there. It's cant a little bit to the right. Yeah. So be it. And then some shadows down there. And then downspouts. The downspouts is actually 24 gauge wire that I tried to bend and fit in there. And I think it looks okay. Again, it's not going to be a contest model. It's not going to be real close to the front of the layout. I just want to get the impression that, hey, there's a gutter and downspouts on it. So, So that's that. Let me see if I can spin it to show the non-track sides. Just stand by here while I uh, reconfigure myself. Well, as we spin around, here's the end here. And again, those windows are just, it's solid in there, but you can kind of see into the operator shed there. I added two eave brackets on the end, which the prototype does have. They're not quite right, but again, they're they're close. I'm not sure if that downspout's right because it's such a long overhang on the, which is the way it is on the prototype. Um, so, eh. again, we're not going for contest here. We're going for a layout model, and that would be the front non-track side. One door inside, smaller titchy door. At this end, probably at the freight end, that's what I'm calling it. And again, on the on the dine ore, the at this end here is where the the kitchen, I believe, was done when they converted it to a diner. Then we'll spin around, and, and my rendition of it, it's going to be you know express railway express freight that kind of good stuff. So it does two titchy doors set in there for that. And then we spin around some more. Hopefully, oh, this wire's catching. This is the darn lead for the wires inside. <laughs> Hopefully, the lights still work when I get this thing all lay out. And then back around to the track side. So, here you go. Block building. I promise this will be the last block building video that I do. Well, because I'm pretty much done. I, you know, to be honest, so when I threw on this, I don't know if I'm actually ever going to make the diner. I may. Someday. But uh, there it is. The Lake City Diner backdated to a station. <laughs> so when I started off about two years ago, wanting to build the diner. Things changed, and I built it as a station. So there you go. Fun build. Took me longer than I thought. I'm going to stop it here. Just go ahead and get this up because... Get it installed in the layout. It's going to be a little bit more work. I have to do work about the platform. And uh, 
That'll be just a regular update video as I, as I get around to it, but I'm trying to get this popped on the layout pretty soon. At least to see what it looks like. I may do that and just, you know, show you that just sitting there and then maybe talk a little bit about the what's next. But I'm not going to worry about uh, extending this video any more than the uh, length that it is. We'll, we'll do the other stuff when I get it on uh, another update. So, all right. Boy, I love the babble. So hopefully that was somewhat interesting. Solid Block, Lake City Station. Okay, one final little segment here. Here it is sitting on the layout. How it's going to be in place. I got the, you know, drill holes drilled for the wires and everything like that. So that's how it's going to sit. Now what I'd mentioned that I have to monkey around with only because now that it's a station and not a diner, you can see where the kitchen was for the diner. I'm going to add a little platform there for the REA and Express and whatnot. And then, you know, on the current version of the building, there's nothing there. The platform's gone. But i got to go back in and put a platform in. So what I'm probably going to do, come in, scrape all that out, come out with some way to extend the platform, probably up to here, and then run it down the front of the building, obviously in front of the station, and then bring it over to probably in here, that kind of stuff. So that's how it's going to go. I think I know what I'm going to use for the platform, but I'm not sure yet. But more to come on that. You know, we'll, we'll continue with that as a part of the ongoing updates to the layout. But that's how it's sitting. I like it. I think it looks nice. Now, again, the view from the aisle, where you're actually going to stand, is more back here. So, again, I think the, you know, the roof line disappeared. I did do a little bit, just a tiny bit. Of subtle weathering on the roof. I didn't do a lot on the, on the structure itself. Maybe a little bit of dark earth pigment from the ground up, but very, very subtle. But I did uh, hit the roof a little bit, some stains running down off the chimneys and whatnot. So that is uh, that is it. That is the all aboard diner, backdated, best I can tell, <laughs> to the late 1950s as a station all right thanks for watching if you slugged it out this uh, another long Babylon video but uh, <laughs> all right like I said last block building video I'm gonna do I really don't have any more to build unless unless boy, I just can't keep ta stop talking this is the okay that's my original that is actually the diner version so you can see it's got the addition for the kitchen at the end but you know very similar in design and shape a little different color I think but if I ever get to build this the intent is when I run my 50s era I have this in obviously as the station and then it's removable, so I can pull it out and pop the diner in if I ever want to run modern. Or just leave it there and call it a diner. Because, again, another thing that I kind of messed up, and then I promise I'll shut up. You know, out here in the front, I have that scratch-built all-aboard diner sign lit up and everything. Just like the prototype. Well, I'm just going to leave it there. You know, whatever. I mean, it really shouldn't be there back in the late 50s when this thing is a... <laughs> when it's a train station... It, but, you know, I'm not going to rip that out, so whatever. And to be honest, no one even notices that. You do all this work, you scratch build stuff, you light things up, and people come in and go, huh, that's nice, can I run trains? So, <laughs> all right, there we go. Lake City Train Station. Now just to get the platform done and keep plugging away here on the layout. So more updates to come. Thanks for watching. And I promise I'm not going to shut up.